All right, everybody, welcome to the Hiking My Feelings virtual campfire. This is virtual campfire number 48. My name is Sydney Williams, and I am your host for this evening. I am the author and founder of Hiking My Feelings. If you're new here, welcome. It's so nice to have you, and I'm excited to see your faces later on the road and on the trail because... Starting tomorrow, we're officially on the road for the Take a Hike Diabetes Tour. Um, Our last tour was in 2019, and we had a big grand plan for going around the country again in 2020, and then COVID happened. So we didn't get to do any in-person events um, last year, and this year we just got off the island. We were on Catalina Island with Kaleo from Pepper and his wife Melanie and K-Bong from Stick Figure hosting a hike and heel retreat on Catalina Island that was so, so much fun. Um, I hadn't even really processed what just happened when we were on the show last week. So we had a nice reunion with our guests last night. It was absolutely amazing. And coming up on the virtual campfire on April 22nd, you can learn more about our upcoming fall retreat. All I'm going to tell you right now is that it's going to be awesome. (laughs) You should definitely plan to be there and I'll give you the dates. It's October 14th through 17th, 2021. So this October, Sydney Barry from Hiking My Feelings, Melanie and Kaleo from Rebel and Muse and K-Bong is coming back as well. So stay tuned, save the date. We'll have more information about registration and how you can join us on Catalina Island on April 22nd. And that campfire is also with Brett from Roots of Creation. So lots of awesome stuff happening. Um, A quick update about Take a Hike Diabetes before we jump into our interview with Dan today. Um, So we are crushing it guys. Like I just can't even say it in any other way. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, hiking my feelings is hosting the take a hike diabetes campaign this year in an effort to raise awareness about diabetes in America. More than 122 million people live with diabetes in this country. I am one of those people. I live with type two. I was diagnosed in 2017 and everything you see here today, all things, hiking, my feelings, hiking and healing, our retreats, the virtual campfire, our programs, the book, None of that would be possible if I wasn't diagnosed with diabetes because that was a ginormous catalyst for change in my life. So to round things out, the tour that we're on is the Take a Hike Diabetes Tour. So we hit the road tomorrow. We're taking the long road. We have a little bit of time to get to our first destination, which is Chicago. And we're hiking around Chicago, June 1st through 20th. It's a 220 mile hike around Chicago. Um, in partnership with the Chicago Outer Belt Alliance. And this trail is all accessible via public transportation. It connects existing pedestrian walkways, trails, um, outdoor green spaces, parks, and more to increase recreation opportunities for folks in marginalized communities and also just in an urban environment. You can find the healing power of nature where you work, live, and play. So our first showcase um, this summer is in Chicago on the Outer Belt, and then we're going to Michigan in July. So July 1st through 17th, we'll be hiking across the entire state of Michigan, starting at Lake Michigan and South Haven, and then all the way across about 250, 270 miles to um, the city of Detroit. So that's July 1st through 17th. And then our wrap up event is in Washington, DC in uh, September. And we're hiking around the Washington, DC metro area. We've got about 80 miles planned in that area, September 13th through 17th. And next week, we have a big announcement about another development in the Take a Hike Diabetes campaign. So we're on a mission to hike a million miles for diabetes awareness this year with the power of our community. I would love to hike a million miles by myself, but I think that's more of a lifetime goal than a 2021 goal. So we need your help to do it. So far, we've hiked 10,586 miles. We have 129 participants signed up and we've raised $10,325 for the Take a Hike Diabetes campaign, which supports all of our diabetes related programming. We offer a 30 day program that's available on demand virtually. So you can learn about the healing power of nature and how hiking can play into your diabetes prevention and management protocols. We also have the Take a Hike Diabetes Tour, where we're showcasing the healing power of nature in urban environments. And we're also, <clears throat> excuse me, doing the um, Million Mile Challenge. So that's the whole campaign. This is where we're at. Thanks to our partners, UST, Solomon, and Ross for providing awesome prizes and tons of support. And if you haven't joined us yet and you're really interested in doing it, we'd love to have you. So you can join us at hikingmyfeelings.org slash diabetes to learn more about the tour, the challenge, and how you can get involved. So without further ado, I'm really psyched. So one of the things about the virtual campfire that you might not know is that we're obsessed with live music. And live music stopped effectively when our tour was canceled. So were the tours of musicians all around the world and all the festivals and all the gathering places where healing is 
entirely possible, um, were just like wiped from the face of the earth. So when I had the opportunity to have Dan Sheehan on the show, who is joining us today, I was like, oh my God, this is the best ever because most of the artists that we've had here on the virtual campfire have been on the Cali Roots stage. So a little bit about Dan. Dan is the co-owner and producer of the largest reggae festival in the U.S., California Roots Music and Arts Festival, and the promoter and operational partner for music venues and outdoor festivals throughout North America. Sheehan has been in the music industry since 1999, starting as a radio DJ when he lived in Guam. After living in Guam, Hawaii Ray Sheehan migrated north or migrated to the Northern California and established his own production company, Good Vibes Entertainment, in 2002. Starting with island reggae bands he knew from growing up on Oahu, Sheehan began booking West Coast tours and his own club shows in various cities in Northern California. Dan was the first booker to bring soon to be massive bands like Soja and Revolution to Hawaii. Good Vibes Entertainment grew rapidly to include producing tours that spanned the entire West Coast and four of the Hawaiian islands, as well as mid-range music festivals. But Sheehan always had desired sinking his teeth into a larger, more complex festival project. When the California Roots Festival came along, Sheehan was ready to jump in with connections, production experience, and dedicated staff. Sheehan came on board with Cali Roots in year three and was instrumental in laying the groundwork and building relationships with agents and management, enabling the festival to secure the top names in the scene. With Sheehan at the helm, Cali Roots rapidly grew from a backyard party to the largest reggae festival in the country. Over the past three years, Sheehan has branched out from Cali Roots as new opportunities have presented themselves. As the promoter of the Avila Beach Resort Summer Series, he has brought sold out events to Avila, California for the last six summers. He has grown the success of the SOMO Event Center in Romer Park, California, as, as he developed an annual summer uh, and fall events at the stunning outdoor venue. Sheehan is also a partner and owner of the iconic Fremont Theater in San Luis Obispo, where he has built a new following of locals and out-of-town concert goers by securing the Fremont as a renowned tour stop for bands of all genres. Jesus, God, like I, I'm like halfway through and Dan is a legend. I'm going to power it. We got this. In 2020, as the music industry shut down, Sheehan paused to take inventory, then guided his team to downscale operations. Within months of the shutdown, Sheehan had nurtured the Cali Roots Festival's brand into a standalone merch company that has grown tenfold in six months, ensuring that the festival will have legs to stand on when the industry opens back up. During the off time, as if he has any, hello, Dan enjoys going to the local Monterey beaches with his daughter and wife, hanging out with his doodle Leo, and cooking amazing from scratch meals for his family and friends. He loves that his work allows him to travel regularly and, he, and support local nonprofits that are near and dear to his heart. Dan, my man, come on down. Lord, this guy, what? Is there anything you haven't done? I mean, well, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Was that, that was a great intro. <laughs> yeah, well, but it's so funny. And I, I think I say this every week because there's something special about hearing your bio read back to you. And I know. It's like, it's a nice check-in. And I think that's half the reason why, like when I, so the first person that ever read my bio to me was actually Kaleo's wife, Melanie for nice. the Rebel and Muse podcast. And she read it and I was sitting on the couch in Kaleo's studio and I was like, I sound kind of awesome. And she was like, hello, <laughs> yes, you are. And it's just, it's such a nice reminder to like reflect back on all that we've been through. So like, what were you feeling yep. as I read about how dope you are? <laughs> I was, that was that, I mean, honestly, I, I was, I was getting these, like, these tingling feelings, like, wow, like, that's, I've done a lot, and, uh, yeah. and, you know, it's been a very emotional uh, last year, and, and to kind of hear what we've done before this last 12 months, uh, it, it's definitely, uh, it's like, wow, okay, yeah, we, we got this, you know, yeah. once, once things come back, we're going to be just fine, you know, so, it was good. To, it was good to hear. So yeah. thank you for reading that. <laughs> oh my gosh, of course. So when we're thinking, I, I'd love to kind of just start at the beginning. So you grew up in Hawaii and then you yep. made your way to Guam. Like what was the transition from Hawaii to Guam and how did you get into the music scene? Um, so, you know, I, you know, obviously I, I grew up in Hawaii. Um, I, I, my parents moved there when I was like three years old. And so I grew up in a place called Eva Beach, which is on the leeward side of Oahu. Um, and, you know, I grew up listening to reggae. Reggae was, I mean, anybody that knows Hawaii, has been to Hawaii, is from Hawaii, they know that reggae is the heartbeat of, of Hawaii. Um, it's on the radio. It's, you know, everywhere you turn, you're, you, can, you can hear it. And, like, I was listening to, like, the classic stuff, like the Gladiators and the Itals and Bunny Whaler and, you know, obviously Bob and, and you know, all that stuff. And so there was a huge influence uh, growing up in the islands. Um, and then, obviously, growing up, 
you know, there was like the Jawaiian bands and then there were bands like Pepper and, you know, that were coming out of Hawaii and, and Natural Vibrations and Three Plus and all these other bands. And, uh, you know, so it was a big influence on kind of the direction I wanted to go. And, you know, I didn't necessarily, you know, think that, hey, you know, I didn't necessarily think as a, you know, in high school or something, I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a promoter. That wasn't, wasn't necessarily the direction I wanted to go. Um, but I ended up, uh, moving to the Bay Area, um, to Mountain View, um, which is, you know, right out, you know, right outside of, you know, it's near Stanford. And uh, I went to a junior college called Foothill to play football. Um, there was a bunch of, there was a ton of, you know, Hawaii kids there. And so like, you know, there's all these little junior colleges in the, in, in Northern California that all these, you know, all these, uh, you know, Hawaii kids would go play at Foothill, De Anza, San Francisco City. Um, and so, you know, we went up there to play football didn't necessarily work out, but, uh, you know, I ended up going to, um, Reagan, the river for the first time, um, I think it was like 97. And I saw, uh, there's this little ad in the back of a high times magazine that was like, you know, Reagan, the river send, like, you had to send money and you had to send this little four by six, uh, index card with all your information, your mailing address, and they would, they would mail you back tickets. And I was like, all right. So I gathered up a bunch of friends and like, we went to Reagan, the river the first year in 97. And it was, that was, that was like the eye opening point where I was like, Oh my God, this is what I need to do. I need to do, I need to do, I need to do this. This is what I want to do. And, uh, that was kind of the start of it, you know? And, um, you know, I ended up getting, uh, a year later, I ended up getting a band, uh, ended up getting natural vibrations on Reggae in the river, um, just by being persistent with, uh, the late Carol Bruno, who was the, the main, uh, the main person up there and, and Jenny, Fo you know, Jenny Foster, and uh, I got I got this band on from Hawaii, and uh, and I was like, and so we built this little tour around it, and I you know I did all these dates in Oregon and Washington and San Jose, and and uh, they stayed in my garage, and so I, I lived with a bunch of roommates, and they stayed in like our garage is converted to a room, and so they stayed in the you know they stayed in our garage. There's like seven of them. There's like a tent in the backyard, and it was it was awesome, you know. And, and uh, I can remember making posts. I can remember making four up flyers at Kinko's. And like, there was like a spelling error on them. And I was like, ah, eh, whatever, well, let's just put it out there. Cause we need to get this out there, you know? And uh, I didn't know what I was doing, uh, but I, I instantly fell in love with the music business. And, uh, you know, and uh, I, I had a friend that uh, his uh, family um, owns, you know, a bunch of different things in Guam. You know, they own a radio station, they own the distributor that distributes uh, Miller beer and stuff. And he's like, Hey man, my family's got a, my family has a radio station that they're turning from a, it was like a you know, top 40 station to our Island reggae station. And you, you want to go out there and be the music director and, and a DJ. I'm like, sure. Why not? You know? And so, and so I went out there and, uh, you know, I became, uh, the music director of I-94 on, on Guam. And, uh, I was the music director and then I was a nighttime DJ from six to 10, um, Irie Dan, the red eye bandits. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, and uh and you know then that was kind of it i was just i just you know they ended up letting me like uh produce a couple shows like a couple concerts like uh that were backed by the radio and stuff and so i was able to get a, you know a taste of that and uh stayed there for two years and moved back to california and uh started good vibes and yeah then we just started jumping into it you know and uh it's it's been a it's been a wild ride since you know um and you know i'm fortunate that uh I'm able to do that and, and work with a lot of bands and, and within the music that I love as well. Um, and over the years, obviously we've expanded to other genres of music and, and, you know, kind of being a more of a overall promoter and not just being, um, you know, in one genre of music, but, uh, you know, reggae is always my, uh, reggae is my true love. So it's always definitely uh, the first one I'm always doing. So um, yeah, that's kind of, and that's kind of how that all started. Man, that's a cool story. And I, I love that. And that's why I'm glad I asked too, because I was like, I, I was trying to visualize like Dan as a DJ. Is this Dan doing like DJ sets? Is this Dan as a DJ at a radio station? <laughs> like, right. that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so when you when you moved to Northern California and started Good Vibes, like, what was the distance or the time between doing that and starting with Cali Roots? Um, so I moved to California in 2002, moved back to California in 2002. So I was doing good vibes for, you know, we were doing it for eight years, you know, and then, uh, and then, you know, Cali Roots came calling and said, Hey man, like this festival, like, 
you know, it's gone to the point where we need, we need additional help to kind of help keeping it grow. And, uh, and so I came on in year three and, you know, the first year I booked Pepper as one of the headliners and Soja as our other headliner. And, you know, we, we, you know, it went from year two, I think we did, I think they did 3000 people. And then year, you know, the, the year I came on, you know, we jumped it up to 7,500 um, per day. And then year four, you know, we ended up booking slightly stupid and a couple of, you know, and then revolution um, and revolution was in year two, but, you know, they grew rapidly as well through this whole period of time. And um, next thing you know, we sold, we sold that one out. I think we sold out three months in advance um, that one. And then the next year we moved into the bigger part of the venue, um, which we're currently in now are like the, the bowl, we call it. And, uh, you know, we sold that one out six weeks in advance and, you know, and so it's, it's been growing ever since, um, you know, we had a couple there's a couple of years where we had a couple, you know, a couple of bumps in a road, but I mean, I, you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, the live entertainment space in general, you know, so it's, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of, so yeah, like eight years and then, yeah, eight years, gosh. And then, and then we came on with Cali Roots. Yeah. That's you start so cool. see, yeah, you start thinking about it, like, damn, okay, I've been doing this a while. Yeah, so. <laughs> I, I got I got some notches on my belt. I've been yeah, doing this yeah. for a minute. Yeah. yeah so yeah. when when you st- let's talk a little bit about 2019, like the the Cali Roots Festival in 2019. How was it? How are you feeling? What were your plans for 2020? I mean, it was epic. It was year 10. And so there was just all this energy and this, 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 this massive amount of energy, you know, and it was the 10th annual, you know, and like for any business to be around for 10 years is, is a feat, you know, let alone, you know, a festival, which are, you know, which are typically high risk events, you know, you know, outside of like your Newport or your Monterey jazz, some of these, you know, things have been going on for 50 plus years. It's a, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, you know, it was a big thing. And so we, you know, the lineup I booked was huge, you know, just the, the marketing that we had for it and like the fans and like the bands, everybody was so into it, you know, and we had, you know, and it's, it went off without a hitch. I mean, we did, you know, we did great numbers, almost sold out all three nights. And, uh, you know, we had this, I can remember we had this huge like staff party that my wife put together. Um, we had this huge staff party after night, you know, after the Sunday night, and it was just like seeing all of our staff and all these bands all together. And, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a really special thing. Um, and it was, uh, you know, we were trying to, you know, for, for 2020, we were trying to figure out how do we top this? Cause every year you're trying to figure out, all right, what do we do differently? You know, it's like, it's like, right. we're, we're, we're capped out of capacity. What do we do to keep, you know, keep elevating the experience for the fans, the bands, you know, what do we, what do we keep doing? And so we were working on a couple of things and then, uh, you know, obviously March came along and, and, uh, things kind of changed, but, uh, um yeah it was uh you know we were we had you know good plans and tickets were you know we were ahead of sales you know from the year previous and so we felt good about it you know it was like gosh like we're rocking like things are looking good tickets are crushing um i'm really excited i was really excited about the lineup which you know i mean it's it's you know it was a it's a great lineup and we continue to carry that lineup over but you know, I, uh, you know, I was like, you know, having, you know, having kind of like our Sunday where we have Damien and Ice Cube on the same day. And like, <laughs> it's kind of, you know, it's like, it was, it was, you know, and then like having Jimmy Cliff on it. And um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, there was a lot of uh, positive energy and like, we were, you know, there was still, you know, we were stoked on the artwork. There was just so many, like, we were like happy, really happy about everything. Um, and uh, yeah. So and it's hard to think back now because, you know, it feels like it was so long ago, you know, when we, when we moved, um, that, you know, it was, you know, it's been a year now since we first, you know, since we first moved our dates. So, um, so it's like, sometimes like, and let's last, this last 12, 12 months have been so, uh, it's, it's been such a weird 12 months, you know, it's like, yeah. we've all been going through, we've all been going through our own stuff and, 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 you know, there's been, it's just been this roller coaster of emotions. And so like some memories from like, you know, before all this happened are a little blurry, you know, you're like, yeah. what were we doing? Like, Oh, that's it right. feels Holy like cow, 10 that... years ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then it feels like 10 minutes at times too. It's like, it's yeah. just like this, it's this weird time that we're dealing with where time is so weird right now, you know? And yeah. Uh, yeah so, so the collaboration yeah. album with Collie Buds, was that planned before the pandemic? Was that like a thing that we were like, Callie Roots is going to produce and put out there or was that a result of canceling the show? 
No, so we did. So we did, you know, so we did so the, the rhythm that just came out, you know, that we just released the first one we did a couple of weeks ago with Kabaka Pyramid, you know, before that, you know, yeah, it was the, the first one that came out. Yeah, that was that was planned all before, you know, before the pandemic, you know, um, and it was good timing uh, to have that music coming out while absolutely. nothing is happening absolutely. like that. Well, that album it, saved it, us last yeah, year. Absolutely. It was so good. Absolutely. It's like it's like, you know, it's like those kind of albums become the soundtrack of people's lives, you know, and it was yeah. the soundtrack of my life. You know, and it was uh, it was definitely uh, it came out in perfect timing. And you know, we just released the second one and uh, which is, you know, going to be just I think it's going to be just as good, you know. But again, like like you said, it's like it's, you know, it's part of, you know, it's part of people's lives during that time. Because like when we were like everybody was in the same position, we were like, holy cow, what's going on? OK, well, here's new music. At least we have that going yeah. on. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard, have you heard of the Reggae Ranch out in Julian, California, east of San Diego? I've heard- I've heard of it. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's where that's our home base when we're not on tour out in the back country. Okay. Sue and Dustin and own it um, from Sundance Vibes. And w- I can remember like when you talk about soundtrack of our, of our lives, like I can remember where I was when Alien came out, the movements nice. version of yeah, it, yeah. where the Ayaterra version came out, where um, the Pepper or yeah, Pepper version came out, like all of these different songs from that particular album i remember i was like i was up on the i was down in the pavilion like where they have their musicians play i was sitting there when we listened to the movement version the first time and i was just like like every single one of those is such a vibrant memory because there was no other music at the time it felt like so it was like good good timing and excellent planning on your part yeah that- and honestly yeah and alien i mean aliens like i mean that's still i mean it's still probably one of my favorite tracks off that entire rhythm yeah. I, I, the movement just does such, such a great job in that you know? yeah yeah so when when you're thinking about everything that happened in 2020 what kind of lessons did you learn last year that you're able to take with you into this year and then carrying that into the 2022 festival trust nothing (laughs) (laughs) everything can go to shit in a split second absolutely nobody knows nobody knows anything we're all amateurs i mean everybody federal you know all the everybody everybody's amateurs like yeah um, we're all figuring it out as we go and no grown-ups know anything that's happening exactly exactly (laughs) um you know i think i think for me but i think for me what one of the biggest takeaways is i have a almost six-year-old daughter um and i was able to spend just like just this really quality time with her over the last 12 months it's like it's like this the silver lining but it's like almost like it's like a I, you know it's like a gold lining it's like so it was so so good pop, it was so good and, and it's kind of made me realize that like I want to kind of put more of my focus into being closer to home you know and creating events and focusing on the events that I do have like Avila and Cali Roots and you know, we're developing a couple new events at the fairgrounds for 2022 um but it's just like I want to be closer I want to be I, I want to be with my family I don't want to necessarily be traveling all over the country anymore and doing those things because you know spending this last year with her has just been it's been like it's been the greatest you know and yeah. usually during the summer, like I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm doing, you know, you know, here and there doing shows, covering shows, you know, hanging out at shows. Um, and I didn't do any of that this past summer, you know, and, um, like we're in March now. So it's like, I went through fall and winter already. So it's like, so I don't know, that's what I mean. Time, time is like, but even like, I, I, what basically I, I, I really like the values of staying closer to home and, and, focusing on on what we have and, and focusing on local we really put a lot of work into monterey and seaside and places of where that's where we live you know and like really trying to build our foundation locally um and kind of develop that and so that's definitely been one of the big takeaways and you know the other takeaway is like you know like we're all human like and like you know like let's not when we when we do come back like we we're like we, we need to be kind to each other a lot more kinder than than, than we have been you know and yes you know, and, you know, and, you know, fortunately for us, like a lot of our fans, like the Cali Roots fans, most of them understand that, like, you know, like we're, we're working on a minimal staff and we're doing the best we can right now. Cause like, you know, it's like, we're also like, you know, we're homeschooling our kid or, I mean, she started our first day back yesterday, but, but we're, but we were homeschooling our kid, you know, and, and doing it like, and, and just mentally just trying to do that. And so I think, you know, it's just having compassion being more, more you know, kind to people, I think is, uh, you know, one of the biggest takeaways and, and obviously staying closer to family, you know? 
Yeah. And I, I agree with that too. It's funny. Cause we were on the road in 2019. Um, our organization tours like musicians tour. In fact, we built it inspired by the musicians that we love. Right. And we were like specifically Scott from stick figure. I had gone to a couple back-to-back shows and I got home and I was like, I didn't, it's one of those things. Like I had, see, it was the first time I saw stick play live. I didn't realize how heavy they were in rotation on our playlist. So I was like, Oh, right. Oh, I know a lot of these songs. And then, so I went yep. home, listened to all the discography, read every single lyric as I listened. And I was like, so you mean to tell me that this dude plays all the music, writes all the lyrics, sings all the songs, and then hires a band to tour with him. Like he does everything himself. Why? Like, I'm not a musician. You don't want to hear me sing. It's a terrible, terrible time. But who's like, why could I not do that for myself? Like, what am I waiting for? Like I am as a creative person who channels it in other ways. Like what, why am I not doing this? So we toured in 2019, like built it like a music tour. Like we just hosted 140 events around the U S doing hikes and speaking events and like introducing people to the healing power of nature. Right. So when we were doing that, I was like, Oh my God, I love this. I wake up in a new city. It's so exciting. Like destination ADD. I am like in tune because there's something new all the time. I'm not getting bored. And then I thought like the first couple of weeks of 20 of the pandemic, I was like, uh oh, like I really missed being in motion. <laughs> and now we're getting ready. We hit the road again tomorrow. And I'm I'm equally excited for it. We dialed it back a little bit. We're not hitting it as hard as we did in 2019. But one of the things I realized was like, as much as I love being around people, like I am an energetic extrovert, but also I need like three days to reset after I host any kind of event. Yeah. Yep. And it was one of those things where I was like, oh my gosh, we, we are out here in the middle of nowhere where we're out at the reggae ranch. It's like nine miles down a dirt road. We're in the middle of the mountains backed by a national forest and a state park. So there's not going to be any neighbors ever. And it's amazing. Wow. And the one thing, like my biggest takeaway of 2020 was like, I love being out there in the middle mm-hmm. of nowhere. Like, especially in a pandemic where like everybody's cooped up in their house. Like if I was in an apartment, I don't know if I would have made it down. No. Like it's wild. So like from a mental yep. health perspective, how has, how have you been? How has your team been? Have you talked to the musicians about like what life is like without touring? Like we've talked to a lot of them, but I'd be interested to hear what the Kelly Roots family's feeling. I mean, you know, for me personally, like I said, there's, lately it's been a lot my it's been a lot better i mean there's mm-hmm. a lot more optimism you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel uh, but early on it was there was definitely uh, there was times like oh my god like what am i gonna do like if i do i have to go like like start another business get a job like what am <laughs> i gonna do because like all, all of a sudden like there was moments where i was like this is like we're never gonna do a festival again like this is never coming back yeah. um and, and there was definitely roller coaster rides like that some days are like yeah it's like we got this and other days like i like i you know i just want to like stay home and drink you know drink some whiskey and and, be, and just you know and like and you know but but for the most part you know thankfully for me like we bought we bought a house like we closed on our house in march of 2020 like literally two weeks before the world shut down um thank god because the housing market is, is crazy right now but we totally got in got a house and so we were able to like develop like our home and like create this nest you know and like yeah. we were able to do that and like thankfully like you know i got a you know incredibly supportive wife and and, and an awesome daughter and you know a bunch of animals and like just kind of like kept me grounded you know and kept me that definitely helped me through it um uh, because there was definitely like i said it was it was tough there for a minute you know but um you know and just like you know i think the other thing that you know a lot of people don't realize like for anybody, when your business or your your passion, like when you're passionate about your business, um, or you're passionate about anything, you know, and when that is taken away from you, like you're like you you start losing some of that fuel in your tank, you know. And like yeah. for me, it's like you know, producing events and being around live music is like that's the fuel that keeps driving me. And to like not have that, to be able to not actually put together an event, like we've done some online events, but like that's you know, like that's not you know, that's that's you know it's cool but it's not yeah, you know it's not, it's not like it's not it's not the same not even close but but uh you know and so like I, I my tank was empty you know like I wasn't able to like produce shows and like just like feel that energy from the fans like and feel that energy from the bands on stage and it's like there's so much energy and vibe that go into that that really have have fueled me and like you know like it's my passion like I I I don't, you know what I mean? Like I'm in the music industry and doing events and stuff like that because I love what I do. It's like, I love the music, but I love putting on the events, you know, like that's like the biggest part for me. 
Um, and to not have that, it was really, it was like, you know, like we were running on empty. A lot of us are running on empty in, in the music industry. Like a lot of us is burnt out, you know? And, um, but I think the light at the end of the tunnel is definitely helping us all like perk back up, like flowers that are finally getting our light again, you know? So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, and, and, and my team is, you know, my team is doing great. You know, it's like, we've, the team got smaller, obviously over the last year. Um, but you know, everybody is, I mean, we're, we're all hanging in there, you know? And yeah. I think we're all super optimistic that we're going to be back and we're going to be back stronger than ever. Um, you know, I mean, there's obviously there's this whole like energy, like we're looking at like the roaring twenties when we come back, you know, and, you know, hopefully I keep joking. It's probably not that people are probably like tired, but like, you know, hopefully the roaring twenties don't end like how the last roaring twenties ended, but, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I say but, that and then I'm like, wait, do I want to call that in? I don't know. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I know. So, uh, but you know, but I, but I, but, but the team is good. We're, we're like, so we're, we're, we're positive and, and thankfully like, you know, we've always been big believers in surrounding ourselves to really good people. And, you know, we've been there for each, for, for them. They've been there for us. And, uh, you know, there's definitely, uh, some of the people that, uh, we, we haven't had contact with that, uh, you know, we need to reach out more. Um, you know, it's like sometimes like, through this, like you've lost contact with some people, but you've had great contact with other people. And I think you know, we're all, we all deal with it in different ways, you know? Yeah. Stress, sure. stress, and yeah, stress and trauma and anxiety. And, you know, it's, we all deal with it in a different ways, so. you know? Well, I think one of the cool things that's going to like the thing I'm really excited about for 2022, I guess, whenever like live music comes back in full capacity um, is just like, I think a lot of people have realized, especially frequent concert goers of which I was one before this all happened. Right. Um, is just how healing music is. Mm -hmm. And so yep. one of the, and that's one of the reasons why we wanted to bring this show together was not only to like talk about, you know, healing in the outdoors, cause that's the work we do, but to, to bring all these different facets of like, what can be healing put together. And when you talk about light at the end of the tunnel and just the energy, Lord, like we hosted this, we've been planning this retreat with Melanie and Kaleo for two and a half years. We finally got to execute it at the end of March and it was one, I mean, like the fact that it even happened, I'm like, this is a miracle. We postponed it <laughs> twice and now we get to do it. Right, we were, right. we yeah. were two weeks out when the pandemic hit. So that was the first thing that like had to go. Um, so it was just, it was nice to just be able to do it. But I tell you what, like being in community and in the orbit of other humans that aren't the people yep. you've been quarantined with. Yep, yep. Dude, I was hot. I've still like <laughs> Alicia's on this call. Mary's on this call. They were both at the retreat. Like we are still right in the vibes from that. Yep. And I'm really excited to see what's possible and just how much of that, like Cali roots. I haven't been yet. I hope to come in the future, but like from everything I've heard, it's the festival to go to. The vibes are nuts. You've said it a couple of times, like that plus like this such a long delay between festivals. Cause you, you were talking before we went live, like by the time yeah. this actually happens, it'll have been three years, three years, since Cali three years happened. Yeah. Like three years. What are you most closer. excited about? I mean, I, you know, I, I actually had this conversation the other night with my wife and, you know, I, and I'm, I'll probably start, I'll probably cry. You know, that's like, cool. I'm, we welcome that I'm here. Like, <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll probably, you know, I think what I'm looking forward to, and I can, I can feel it already is like, coming on stage and like welcoming the fans there before that first set, you know, and like welcoming everybody there because there's a lot of fans that have stuck with us. And like, they are, they, you know I mean? Like we're, they're huge supporters of what we're doing. They goosebumps stuck with like us. head to toe. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this <laughs> I can see them. people on YouTube, people listening to the podcast later. Like I am just like, I'm visualizing this yeah. for you and I'm here for this moment. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I got, I have chicken skin too. It's, it's totally like, I am, I, I am looking forward to, I'm looking forward to like the gates opening. I'm looking forward to the fans coming in. I'm looking forward to being on stage for that first artist, that, that, that first note. And it's like that downbeat. And it's just like, I'm, 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 I'm it's, and I keep telling the first band that's going to be playing. I'm like, like what you like, I'm giving, I'm handing you like the, one of the biggest opportunity, like this is shoes. Like you're going to be the first band to play on our stage since, you know, since revolution closed, you know, what, what will be three years, you know? And um, you know, like I said, my daughter's going to be seven. She was four at the last one. She's going to be running things at the next one, you know, and, <laughs> um, you know, and it's just, uh, I, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, uh, it, it, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to my staff. I'm looking forward to catering, you know, I'm looking forward yeah, to all of it, <laughs> all of that. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm like, I mean, we, you know, actually, you know, my, we live, we live like 10 minutes, seven minutes from the venue. Um, 
and we actually this you know this past uh winter winter you know i taught you know i taught my daughter how to ride bike ride her bike at the at the fairground so like you know we've been going i love this (laughs) i know it's been super awesome and like so we've been going there like we bring our doodle and like you know he like we throw the ball she she learned to ride a bike and for a minute there we were like going like saturday picnics me her and me her and leo were doing saturday picnics like in the you know where one of the stages is you know we were doing that for you know a little while and it's you know so we we've definitely been like you know we we've definitely been kind of making sure that we're still there and that we're still connected to the venue we're still connected and it's uh but i'm looking i'm looking forward to this like that god like the gates opening you know like we're going to and we have a thursday now we added a whole nother day for 2022 you know so which (laughs) which 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 my staff is going to kill me because i keep i'm like today i just confirmed another artist well you know originally it's gonna be like a four o'clock gate so maybe we'll do like a noon gates now so i can add like three more artists you know so um but why not you know so why not it's uh, making up for lost time at that point (laughs) yeah exactly the demand is there people will come like people are so stoked to like get back to it i mean we've all been uh we've been we've all been so uh yeah like you said it's like not being around other humans not being around people that we haven't connected with um and uh that's you know like i mean yeah, that's that's uh, that. I think that's a huge thing too. It's just like I mean, I was just I, was just, I just went somewhere a couple of weeks ago for the first time and, and like saw friends that I haven't seen in a year, and it's like holy shit, you know? It's like wow, it's just it's been it's been it's been it's been too long for some of that, you know? So yeah, yeah. I was yeah. Uh, I was we had Nathan um, from Ayaterra on at the nice. beginning of the year, and I was like. I asked him the same question, like, what are you looking forward to when music comes, like when you can play your first show? And he said what he said. And then I was like, you know what I'm excited for? Like, I'm excited for the bass drop on stars when Ayaterra takes the stage. Like, that's all I want. (laughs) After I hear that, then I'll be like, good to go. But um, since this is like, I love the kind of like one outdoor festivals, you're outside, music is healing, spending time in the glorious sunshine is also healing. Um, Has camping always been a part of Cali Roots or is that a recent addition? No, so we, you know, we actually, you know, camping used to be a kind of a bigger part of it. We used to have more camping on site. We actually camped people in the bowl before um, for two years. Like when we weren't using the bowl, we actually camped camper in there, campers in there and sold camping. Um, but, you know, recently over the last few years, we've kind of contracted with Laguna Seca, which is, uh, you know, the racetrack here. Um, and so we do all of our offsite camping there. And then we have, we sell minimal amount of RVs on site and then we sell, you know, minimal amount of glamping spots on site and then there's the rest is artist camping staff camping um you know kind of friends of the festival camping um but it's because it's it's really a small camping space you know yeah i mean the 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 cool thing about cali roots is that there's you know in you know seaside and monterey there's you know there's you know thousand hotel rooms motel rooms and so a lot of right across the street so there's a lot of people that you know just rent those out um and come over but yeah the, the camping aspect I, I wish we could do more camping on site um because you know i've, I've you know it definitely adds a whole nother element um yeah and a whole you know and so but our campgrounds for being small anybody that has been in our campgrounds know that uh, it's a, there's a lot of fun to be had out there yeah yeah it's a it's a good time allegedly yeah <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I've been told. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I Instagram stalked you a little bit, and I saw a picture of you and your daughter. Uh, looks like it was by the water, just kind of walking around on some of the um, cliffs, maybe in Monterey or some such. Yep. But do you are you an outdoorsy kind of guy? I mean, I know you love outdoor festivals, but do you spend time in the outdoors doing any kind of recreation activities? Yeah, I mean, you know, we go. I mean, we go to the beach all the time. So we're like, you know, either we go to the beach or we're tide pooling. Nice. Um, you know, and you know, my daughter loves tide pooling. And so like, we'll, we'll go out during low tide, um, and go out there. We go out to, you know, John Denver beach, which is in Pacific Grove, kind of on the point. And uh, we go out there and we do a lot of tide pooling. Um, and then she's, you know, she's, we haven't done it obviously with winter, but, uh, she's a huge, you know, she loves swimming. Um, nice. and so, you know, and so we'll go down to lover's point or, uh, you know, or Del, you know, Del Monte beach and go out there and, and we'll go swimming a bunch. Um, and anytime, you know, obviously if I'm, you know, anytime, you know, like we try to go to lakes and obviously when we're in Hawaii, we're at the beach all the time, but, yeah. um, and then, you know, we do some hikes and, and, you know, at, at one point I have, I, I've slacked off the last couple of months just because things start to pick up, but you know, I was doing probably four or five mile walks every morning. Um, nice you know, good so, for you yeah i mean and that last that was, i was doing that for like a year and a half you know almost two years and then and the last couple of months has been it's 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 you know it's it's like i said with with our kid our daughter just started school 
yesterday was their first day in in person so um but it was hard you know it's like it's like because you know my wife amy also works for the you know works for the company she you know me and her do it together um and so like you know she's doing part of the day i'm doing part of the day and uh and so it's just trying to balance of life you know um yeah. so but yeah we try to get out as much as we can you know so um yeah sometimes it's uh you know, sometimes it's just in the backyard. We do a bunch of stuff in that, you know, when we bought, when we bought the house, we redid the whole backyard and kind of created this whole space because, you know, doing that. Uh, but, you know, we live in a, we live in a place where, you know, where it's, uh, we have many outdoor options, you know, so, yeah. which yeah. is great. Well, and I, I love that Amy works with you. Um, how long, so remind me, how long have you guys been doing this together? Um, so we've been doing this together. Um, gosh, I mean, she's, so we, she used to do publicity. And, uh, so she, uh, I was doing shows in Santa Cruz at the vet's hall and, uh, she came to one of my shows and she's like, this guy needs help. And, and Toddy who, who works at, uh, who, who, um, owns the reggae festival guide. Um, she worked, for, Amy worked for her in Tahoe and, uh, and then Amy was in Santa Cruz and, and she saw, if Toddy saw I was doing shows, she said, you should give this guy a call. He might need publicity work. And she came to one of my shows. I'm like, yeah, this guy kind of needs help with everything. So, so we ended up, uh, we ended up uh, meeting up like that and she was doing publicity for me. And, and I, you know, I took her to Hawaii for a couple of shows and, and, you know, next, the next thing you know, uh, we're together. And, uh, and so we've been, we've been doing this, gosh, I think it's together. We've been doing this 15 years now. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a little like longer that. than that. So, yeah. So, yeah. so there was, so you guys pretty much like you met, started working together and you've been together ever since kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Same yeah. for me and my husband. So we are in uh year three of hiking my feelings and we're in year 11 together, nine married this year. I think, yeah, nine wow. married this year. Yeah. 10 would be next year. Any advice for folks that are doing work? Well, I'm asking for me specifically, but I'll position it as for other people. Um. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you for advice. So, um, but, but it's, I, I think, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, uh, you know, sometimes I think for for us, you know, what we found, and especially, you know, as you know, it's like it's it's having that separation sometimes where like it's not everything you talk about, which is hard sometimes because especially when you're passionate about it and it's yeah. something that you both love you know, it's going to carry over to, you know, to everything. And so like, you're, you know, you're watching a show or you're having dinner or whatever it might be. And like, you're talking about, you know, we're talking about events or we're talking about new festivals or we're talking about artists and, um, you know, and, uh, but yeah, it, it's just trying to find that balance, you know? Um, and, you know, for me, it's like, fortunately, like she understands the industry and she understands the, the, the ups and downs and kind of the weird hours and, you know, the OCD, she also understands the OCD and stuff that I have. And I understand the OCD she has. And, and so yeah. it's, it's, it, it's, you know, for the most part, it's, it's a good, uh, it's a good, it's a good thing. I mean, obviously sometimes, you know, like anybody, like in any relationship, any partners like you're going to butt heads, you know? So, yeah. um, you know, if you don't, there's, I don't know, I don't, I don't believe that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, you know, for the most part, for the most part it works, you know? So, well, and it's, and it's pretty cool. I mean, like, I think, I think, uh, you and your wife and me and my husband, Barry, I feel, and Melanie and Kaleo to that end, like, I feel like there we're proof that it's possible to not only enjoy spending time with your partner, mm -hmm. but working with them and being around them nearly 24 seven is yep. in the case of the pandemic. Like my husband and I live in a van. We travel around the country. We are together 24 seven, unless I'm in the bathroom or taking a shower. Right. Like that is right. the thing. And somehow we don't get sick of each other. Like it is possible to, to really enjoy the people that you're with. And so absolutely, that's awesome. Absolutely. Um, so talk to me a little bit about 2022. What do you guys got coming up for Cali Roots? Well, actually, so you just did Cali Roots Rhythm, the second one, you're dropping tracks from that full album yeah. comes out end of May. Is that right? End of May. It comes out, yeah. comes out Cali Roots weekend. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So what yeah. does the rest of 2021 look like? And, and how are you guys gearing up for 2022? I mean, so we're rolling out in a couple of weeks. I'm going to roll out the marketing for, but we're going to do our online festival, Can't Stop the Music, um, too, which is kind of like a, a mix of new content plus, you know, previous year's sets from, you know, various artists. Um, and so we're going to roll that out. That, that's going to happen Memorial Day weekend. Um, we also have, uh, you know, we're, we, we partnered with uh, um, Felton Music Hall to, you know, as far as their, their Roaring Camp uh, series. And so we have three, we have, one night of Expendables, Ayaterra, 
um, on May 28th, which sold out. And then we have two nights of tribal seeds, the nights, you know, the 29th, 30, um, at Roaring Camp. Uh, and so we have that, which is exciting. You know, those are kind of like pod shows. And so like, there's like six person pods, two person pods, four person pods, which I mean, it's cool. It's what we have to do now, but, uh, you know, I, I look forward to the day when we're back to full capacity and we don't have yeah. to, to do drive-ins or, or, or socially distanced shows, but, uh, you know, it is what it is for now. I mean, and it's, it's, you know, it's still providing energy for people. Um, and so we're doing that. And then, uh, we're working on a couple of things in October, um, at the fairgrounds, you know, we're also doing, we also do like, you know, country music and kind of like some of that Americana stuff. It's kind of, we also do shows like that. So like, do you know, Ray Ryan, Zaragoza? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I was like, yeah, if you don't yeah. get her immediately, yeah, she's fantastic. Absolutely. I love her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And so we, you know, so we, we, you know, we 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 do stuff, you know, like you know, like artists like Ryan Bingham and Tyler Childers and stuff like that. Um, and so we're working on some stuff in October, and we got, you know, we're working on something in August. Um, as things start to open back up, right now it's kind of hard to send offers out because we just don't know. What, what our capacities are, yeah, yeah. What our capacities are going to be, you know, it's like, can I do five thousand people or can I do two thousand people? And like, what's the, you know, what's the restrictions here? Um, <coughs> where, uh, you know, we have, you know, the Fremont Theater in San Luis Obispo, so we're trying to, you know, we're working, you know, hard to kind of get that ready to open up um, whenever we can. So we're not like, what we don't want to do is be on our heels when things open, when open up, right. like, and that's that's the thing we're all trying to like, all right, like. You know, but like we can't open up at ten percent. Like we just, I mean, I can't do ninety people. Like that's, I mean, there it's better to stay closed. You know, unfortunately, right. it's just it just costs too much. Um, and so you know, we're doing that, and and you know, trying to you know, trying to just kind of keep pushing through. Keep you know, I finally feel confident that we can actually market properly, and not uh, not feel like a weasel promoter that's trying to market during a pandemic you know what i mean like yeah. come get these like, tickets we, for this show know, i'm gonna cancel in two weeks exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly you know it's like, i i just i i like none of us like it, it just wasn't you know when like, we're like we can't you can't market anything right now like there's no social media ads or there's no street team like we can't do anything right now and so yeah. um so we're looking forward to kind of things coming back where we can you know where we're actually marketing properly again we can actually and you know we have a bunch of shows at avila like we have slightly stupid um we have uh revolution and we have a couple country shows there so we it's like you know that's all in the fall and so hopefully you know by i'm i, I feel by by may you know probably early june i think i think we're going to be you know in in pretty good stride you know yeah, so dude i um, hope so and that and we're we're kind of on the same boat too because we're doing so all of our the the take a hike diabetes tour with the events that we're doing like everything's virtual first so we have a virtual hiking component where you can like go on a hike wherever you live and hike right. with us and log your miles towards the cause um but like the second that we're able to and we have clearance to we can add in person stuff like right yeah. away like cuz we're going to do the virtual campfire on every Thursday that we're on the trail and if we happen to be able to have people join us around an actual right. campfire it's going to be dope but like that's one Absolutely. of the things. And so how has that been for you with like sponsors and partners too? Is everybody just kind of like waiting or are they on well, the mindset? Yeah. Like let's, let's plan. And then we can dial back or dial up. I, I mean, a lot of people are waiting right now. And I think, you know, it's, uh, you know, we really haven't reached out too much to, to the sponsors yet, but, uh, you know, a lot of people are just waiting, you know, and, and for us, like we just, you know, it's like, it's, it's, we were getting so tired of just like, doing something and then having it be, you know, postponed or canceled. It's, it became like mentally just draining. You know? it's, it's, like, it's, right, like, it's emotionally exhausting. Yeah, too. exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it's just like, Oh my God, like, are we really doing this again? Like, here we go. We got to postpone another show. We, I just postponed three shows last week, you know, and it's just, I'm, it's, it, it becomes like, it, it's a, it's, it's a, like I said, it's a mental wear, but um, you know, and so we're, I think we're finally at the point now where, especially where Cali Roots 2022, my, my whole thing when we moved Cali Roots to 2022 was like, let's just take the, let's just take the safest route and push our way out all the way to next year. And if, I mean, I mean, shit, if, if we're not back by 2022, there's, there's bigger issues happening, you know? And so, for sure, um, yeah. you know, and, and I didn't Won't feel be for like a lack going, of trying. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I, I, didn't, I didn't feel like going into the fall was the, was the best play for us. I felt, you know, like we don't, why, why be a part of the experiment in October and like have a ton of different, you know, everybody and their grandma's going to be touring and all these festivals that move to October, September, like, let's just go stay on our weekend and let's just do it. And, and, and it's, and it's worked out great for us. I think, you yeah. know, it, it was, it was the right move. Um, 
And so I think now we can finally start reaching out to sponsors and, you know, start getting that whole thing rolling where people are, you know, I think they're more, I think the confidence level of actually like doing an event is, is, is becoming much greater, you know? Yeah. hundred so. percent. Well, and I, I'm curious with that kind of piggybacking off all of that, like, what do you think, like, what's your two part question? First part, like, what is, what is your vision for Cali roots and the music industry? Like, what are you hoping we can take out of everything we learned last year and bring that into the industry as a whole moving forward? Um, I mean, I think, you know, I, I, there's a couple of things I don't want. Um, yeah, let's do that too. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, I think for me, I think the, the honestly, the, the, to have a vaccine to go to an event uh, is not something I want. I think that that scares me. Um, I, I think it's just, you're creating this whole new class of people and it's just like, and it becomes like, you know, they, no one should be forced to take the vaccine. If you want to take it, great. If you don't, but it's going to come to a point where, you know what? Like, if you don't feel comfortable going to a show, you just don't go. Like, we can't keep, like, we can't be at these reduced capacities um, when vaccines are, are available to everybody. Again, like, no one should be forced to take it. But, like, you shouldn't also, to like, there shouldn't be also, like, oh, you have to have a vaccine to go to a festival or an event. Like, that's, I, I just don't, I don't really like that. That doesn't feel good. Um, and so I'm hoping that's not something that becomes, you know, regulated by, you know, by the government where we actually have to like abide by it because I, I just don't, I don't like it, but, yeah. um, you know, and I think, uh, I think there's going to be this huge demand and this appreciation, uh, even more so, like you said earlier, I think there's just, you know, I think people are like, really like when something's taken away from you and like suddenly, like literally suddenly, like a one night I was at a pepper show on their bus the next night the world shut down that was my last show with pepper you know and yeah. it's like you know and, and and i you know to not to just have it just taken away from you i think i think the appreciation of it um i hope lasts longer than the first show for people you know what i mean i hope it lasts longer than a year i hope it's something that we kind of live with and it becomes you know becomes you know uh, uh you know more of a more of a thing instead of like you know instead of uh you know people just being like, you know, with their, you know, their phones up with their iPads up, which I don't think those are going to go away. It's just part of it. Right. But I think it'd be you know, nice to watch get, it with our eyes for that first one. Yeah. I, I, right. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. Instead of, instead of the dude, holding you can't the iPad. record <laughs> and not look through the screen. If you are, you're a sociopath and I don't know what you're doing. Like you, put your phone down, just take it yeah. in, make a, make a memory in your mind. Like we used to. Exactly. <laughs> like we used to. Exactly. Like we used to. Everybody and, knows uh, you're at Cali roots. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so I think, you know those are those are things i hope kind of carry through i hope that like that, that appreciation of, of live music and, and and just gathering you know as humans being with each other um and just kind of absorbing that i hope that's something that carries on you know because i i know that like for me personally i can't wait to be around you know i don't necessarily want to go into a crowd of twelve thousand right now but like I, and i think we all have to work up to that I i'm not yeah. quite ready to do that but I want to, I want to see my, I want to see my friends and then eventually like see more and see more and then see a bunch of people I don't know in the same area, you know, and make and, new and, friends. Uh, That's and make too. new friends. Exactly. <laughs> what a concept, you know? So, um, you know, and so I think, uh, yeah, I mean, those are, those are things I, I, I hope, I hope don't happen. I hope happen, you know? So, yeah. Is there um, anything, anything that's going on in the music industry, either before the pandemic or kind of piggybacking off what you hope does and doesn't happen like I like to ask all of our guests like if you had a magic wand for anything that's on your heart and mind whether that's in the industry or outside of the industry just in society in general is there anything that you would like love people to understand better or have a different um approach to or like a problem you would like to solve like if you had a magic wand you could wave over something that impacts your life what would that be and what would be it fixed (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> um my my biggest thing would be that uh, uh artists don't worry about the size of their letters on the on the posters <laughs> uh, that would be, like you don't need you don't need to print out my poster and take them take a ruler to it and measure and make sure it's the same size as the artist next year come on um, <laughs> guys oh, no, it, it, get it, it together it team <laughs> i know it happens but no i i think i think uh you know it's a it's uh I, I, again i, I that we all kind of work together in the music industry, the industry, the music industry is, is fragmented. It's not, uh, there's a lot of people that like, you know, everybody's kind of out for themselves. Um, mm-hmm. And during this pandemic, a lot more people have come together. There's been new organizations that have formed because of it, because like we didn't have any, like, 
organizations that would fight for us, you know, and like Neva and other organizations kind of came up that, uh, you know, were like the, the voice for us, um, you know, in Washington to kind of get, you know, some of these grants that were, that were, you know, that got crashed today, but, uh, um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, it's like, uh, it's uh, coming together and I think working together, you know, currently that's happening. The agents and the artists and the, the promoters, like we're all working well together, but again, like that could all change. And, 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 you know, once things get the back to kind of moving the way they have been and people get, uh, you know, they're like, Oh, well, we're, you know, we're in it for ourselves again. And like, no, you need to pay me that, or I'm going to give it to the next guy. You know, some of that stuff happens um, in the music industry. Um, but uh, you know, I, I hope that we can all play, you know, still play nice in the sandbox, you know? Yeah. Well, and I think something I've noticed, at least on the artist side, um, and that people say in our community a lot, because there's a lot of folks that are in our community that prior to the virtual campfire, this was not their genre of preference. Um, But one of the things that we hear consistently and that I've noticed, um, especially over the pandemic, is just like the collaborative nature between the artists in this genre. Like everybody's Mm -hmm. doing stuff with each other. Everybody's doing a cameo on a song or whatever. So what in your experience, because now you've kind of branched out to other genres and stuff, is that the case in other genres too? And I'm just not seeing it, or do we have something really special here in this genre as far as collaborations go between artists? I think we have something really special. Um, I, I mean, working with other genres of music, this, this genre of music is very special. I mean, you can see it. I mean, it's it's been like that, you know, and it, but like it continues to uh, evolve. Um, I mean, like you know, one of the, one of the greatest things we love about Cali Roots is that the fact that it has become kind of like this industry event where like er- all these bands, every band, pretty much 95% of the bands come for all three days um, because they want to like hang out with their friends, the other bands, awesome. they want to get on stage and like, and like our backstage, it's like, it's this, it's this really fun space where all these bands are hanging out with each other. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a special thing. And I, it's, it's very special in this scene that, uh, and, you know, when I book the lineup, like I definitely kind of keep that in mind, like who can collaborate on stage together and all that stuff happens organically. It's not, it's not something I'm orchestrating. I'm just orchestrating by providing the, the canvas, you know, for them yeah. to do their thing. So, um, but uh, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely special to this scene, you know, Yes. Uh, it's also it's a very competitive scene too you know and all, everybody is it's like everybody's trying to climb you know like climb their way to you know to you know that headliner status and and so um it's definitely uh but again like the collaborative space is very very special yeah absolutely well i uh have absolutely just loved getting to know you and hearing more about cali roots and everything you're doing um mary alicia if either one of you has questions go ahead and pop on your camera um one of the things we like to do at the end of all of our events um whether they're in person or virtual is to do a group gratitude circle so we all put on our camera and say what we're grateful for so mary and alicia i'd love to invite you to join us for that but um dan what are you thankful for i'm i mean i'm thankful that i'm thankful that we're we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel that I think is, is a positive thing. I'm thankful that, you know, I'm, I'm surrounded by resilient, strong people that have uh, helped me stay strong through this. Um, and, you know, so I'm, I'm thankful for my family. Excellent. Yeah. And where, where can people stay in touch with you and, and what's the scoop on tickets for 2022? Um, so, you know, our website is CaliforniaRootsFestival.com. Um, CaliforniaRootsPresents.com is kind of like the, the site that has all of our shows. Um, and then, you know, my Instagram is the real Dan Sheehan because uh, there's been a couple of fake Dan Sheehans, I guess. So. <laughs> they hate us because they ain't us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, but yeah, the real Dan Sheehan on Instagram and uh, yeah, Cali Roots uh, Fest at Instagram um, is, uh, yeah, that, that's where you can find us. Nice. Alicia or Mary, did you have questions? Or are you just grateful? Okay. Alicia, what are you grateful for? <laughs> well, I'm grateful to be here for sure, but I'm definitely grateful to be a part of this interview. Dan, you are the man. Callie Roots. Thank you. <laughs> so amazing. Um, big supporter. And yeah, thank you. Thanks for putting that thank on. You. Thank you. Yes. Mary, how about you? Uh, This conversation is reminding me how grateful I am for all the new music I've discovered, thanks to Sydney and Barry. Um, (laughs) I'm in San Diego, and so I've known Slightly Stupid 
for many years and loved their music, but hadn't really ventured outside of them that much. Um, and now over the last year, I've just um, discovered all this beautiful music and um, just have an appreciation for the collaboration and the support that all these artists give each other. I do think that's special to this genre. And um, I'm just grateful to be feeling the vibes from this music. Thanks. Yeah. Thank well, I you. think, well, it sounds like maybe we should do a hiking my feelings something at Cali Roots next year. Absolutely. I'm just saying that sounds like a Absolutely. great idea. <laughs> I love the idea. I love that idea. Definitely. Definitely. I wanna, definitely ooh, you're adding a Thursday. Could I do a virtual campfire at Cali Roots? Yeah, absolutely. Done. Absolutely. Happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. It'll be like a big in-person party of all the artists that we've met. This is going to be so fun. Not to like absolutely. add programming to your plate, but we'll figure it yeah. out. Um, cool. Well, I'm thankful for the opportunity to get to know you, Dan, um, and for all the work that you and the team do to bring this music to the masses. And I'm really, really looking forward to when that first downbeat hits and we're all just like, what? Uh, <laughs> like the I lights know. come on and like lasers I can feel it and, yeah, dude yeah. full gooseies i'm ready so can, thank you can, for joining us <laughs> thank you so much it's been yeah. a pleasure being here thank you absolutely thank you so much and for thank everybody you. on youtube we'll wave bye bye youtube